What is going on Stallions, AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today we're checking out two limited edition Microsoft Xbox controllers. We're gonna get Frosty with this Arctic bad boy over here and show him our big furry Yeti. Then we're gonna take it to a nitty gritty squeeze a titty urban operation inside the city with this Daystrike camo. I'm gonna showcase the differences between an Xbox One controller and an Xbox Series controller. And I also wanna touch on where Microsoft is taking their limited edition controllers as I am a big collector. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, over here at the Stormtrooper desktop, as always, if you're new to the channel, this is where we do our unboxings, custom controller and PC builds, and a whole lot of other fun stuff. So we have two controllers here, both licensed Microsoft Xbox Limited Edition controllers. The Arctic Camo pattern was released almost three years ago during the Xbox One S and X era. And the Daystrike Camo over here is the big old long Wookiees pube here. Your sister must have been over here last night. And then the Daystrike Camo was released about a month ago for the Xbox Series S and X. However, obviously with Microsoft, they are completely cross compatible amongst generations. So you can use Xbox One accessories on the Series and Series accessories on the One, which is really, oh mama really, really cool. So I have a pretty extensive collection of limited edition controllers as well as custom from companies such as AIM, Scuff, Battle Beaver, Razer, Nacon Revolution, Astro C40, etc. And I also had a small business for about two years building one-off custom controllers, just really unique off the wall shit that really scorches the corneas and slaps the ass cheeks. So what are the differences between an Xbox One controller and an Xbox Series controller? That is a very fine question. That is a very good question and they are very, very subtle differences. So first of all, they shaved off a couple of millimeters off of the bumpers here and added this kind of rib texture. They have a bit of a diamond texture on the triggers here on the Xbox One S controller and on the Series S and X controllers, they use this much grippier uh, ribbed for his or her pleasure design on top of there. And also, as you can tell, the bumpers have been shaved down a little bit, which I think do feel a lot better. Also, during my initial disassembly and customization of the uh, the Arctic Frosty or Whiteout, as I like to call it, Series S controller. Let's get that sucker in here real quick. During the disassembly of this controller, I noted that there are different uh, bumpers in here now, and they are a lot more durable and less likely to break as that was a common point of failure on the original Xbox One controller. Face buttons are virtually identical, almost. They're actually a couple of millimeters higher. So as you can see, I used Xbox One face buttons on this build here, but they're actually sunken into the shell here. And it is definitely noticeable when I go to press these, uh, if they're almost flush with the shell and just doesn't feel right. So make sure when you're purchasing components for a build that you get Xbox series buttons. Uh, those face buttons are a little bit higher. Next up, of course, we have the share button here. PlayStation had the share button on the PS4. However, with Xbox One, if you wanted to take a screenshot or a video clip, you had to hold down the Xbox button, tab over in your uh, Xbox pop-up menu, and then save the, uh, the, the media, the content that you wanted. Now there is a share button here, which I really do like. And I really do like the D-pad as well. They call it the hybrid. They call it the hybrid and that's exactly what it is. You have this nice wheel design, which is great for fighting games, being able to manipulate the D-pad, but you also have a raised four point D-pad as well, which I think is really, really nice. And then you also get this very, very nice texturing on the back. Now I will say it's a cool little Sony Easter egg to have the face buttons, you know, cross, square, circle, triangle on the PS5 DualSense but it really doesn't provide that much grip. Not that you're, you know, slinging your controller around when you're playing. I guess maybe you do. I don't know how excited you get when you play, but um, you get a lot more grip out of a stock Series S or X controller. But with a lot of these limited edition controllers that Microsoft drops, they either have rubberized material or they have this same, well, ASMR for you boys the same rib design, which I think provides a whole, a whole heck of a lot of grip. Now, one thing I will say about Microsoft, they do limited edition or custom controllers so much better than Sony. It is literally night and day uncomparable. I don't think this is even a point of argument or anything like that. I have had a lot of limited edition PS4 controllers and, uh, and all that Jim Ryan and the boys over there do is slap on a faceplate, or maybe if they're feeling a little frisky at the blue factory, they might throw on some face buttons. Microsoft literally etches custom engraving into the shells, adds little Easter eggs inside the battery tray, uses a whole slew of face buttons, uses different colored analog sticks. I mean, they, they, they really do the works. It's pretty insane. And that is very evident on these two models right here. These are actually some of their more basic limited edition controllers. So I really do like the Arctic cam over here for a couple of reasons. One, it's translucent. The shell is actually see-through. You can tell because there is an aluminum D-pad 
There's an aluminum D-pad wheel in there that holds this uh, D-pad in place, which is really sweet. And also I really do like, and I also do like that they still have the colored dots for the face button uh, right there in the middle of the face buttons, which is great. I mean, granted, I'm sure you guys know what color the stock or factory face buttons are supposed to be, but I think that's a really nice little touch, a little attention to detail and whatnot. So with this controller, Microsoft was originally planning to use all white, a matte white thumbstick. However, during the uh, R&D or research and development, they decided against that because, well, white thumbsticks show a lot of dirt from your nasty little fingertips. But on the Arctic camo, they actually also used a kind of uh, frosted Xbox button as well. It's not completely whited out or anything. It's a nice frosted look, which I really, really do like. And I have to say from the 1S and 1X era, uh, or I, could, I guess I could just say the Xbox One era, um, this is probably one of my favorite controllers. It's not the most flashy. It's not the most crazy. There's more eye gouging customs out there like the Cyberpunk, uh, which I do have, and a couple of the other uh, early Xbox models before they eliminated the chin here that are a little more flashy, but this is a really classy understated look in my opinion. Now coming over here to Daystrike. Um, this is gorgeous for a couple of reasons. I like this this red color pattern and also the face buttons that they use here have never been used in any other model. There are red face buttons and a lot of other limiteds, uh, but they're different. These are a little bit lighter, almost kind of like a pink. And also the lettering in the face buttons is almost like a dark brown which is really interesting. So these are the first times that, so this is the first time that Microsoft has used these face buttons in a custom. Now on the back, I will say this one is a little bit bland. I wish they would have either used the rubberized material instead of this hard scratchy plastic, or I wish they would have added a little bit of flair, maybe something here, uh, maybe continue this pattern on the battery tray, maybe some flat matte red triggers. Um, the back I think is a little bit underwhelming and I probably would disassemble this and hydro dip the back if I were gonna, you know, not keep this fact, not keep this factory stock. But um, all in all, the front of it looks fantastic. Some other changes worth noting, it is actually kind of a slick, almost hard rubber here in the center and on the newer models, it is a different thumbstick design. It still has that concaved design. They're not going with a dome stick. Uh, they st still use that concave design, but it is much more grippy in the center. Uh, the thumbstick modules are virtually identical from the Xbox One. The uh, uh, face button mechanisms are virtually the same. Triggers are virtually the same. Bumpers are different. Like I mentioned, not only are they more durable, but they're also a lot more tactile and clicky. Yeah, they just feel more durable and put together. That's good. So as for the future of Microsoft Xbox Limited Edition controllers, they are no longer going to be using this little color dot design to indicate the face buttons, which again, I said I thought was really cool, and I do, uh, but they are no longer going to be doing that on any of their limited edition controllers. Also a sidebar for you collectors out there. I would recommend scooping up the Cyberpunk 2077 custom if you do not already have it. I do own one. Uh, I might even pick up another one and leave it new in box because that is going to be the last Xbox One custom or limited edition controller, thus making it valuable over time. Um, as all the newer limited edition controllers, are going to be for the Series S and X with the share button and this D-pad wheel, the different bumpers. So the Cyberpunk 2077 controller, which not only looks super sick, uh, probably one of my favorite customs. Let's get that sucker in here too. I mean, not only is this cosmetically just one of the coolest looking custom controllers that Microsoft has ever pumped out. I mean, it's etched in right there with no fear, the little logo on the battery tray door, little barcode right there, rubberized grip back here, two different trigger colors. Wow, it's dusty. Um, not only does this look absolutely awesome, but like I said, this is the last Xbox One custom controller that they will be making. So these are gonna be worth a couple of shekels in the near future. If you guys have any questions about limited edition or collectible controllers, shoot them my way or to the Gamer Heaven community in the comment section below. If they don't answer your question, I sure as shit will. And drop in the comment section below your guys' favorite limited edition controller that Microsoft has ever produced. Let's keep it Microsoft. I know there's other good controllers, limited uh, edition controllers going all the way back to like the N64 era and whatnot. Let's just keep it Microsoft. You can go all the way back to the original Xbox if you want. So maybe like the Duke, but uh, I want to hear what Microsoft limited edition controller really tickles you in the gamer in other regions. Get your gamer rod full to where you're shooting the gamer goo. And I will see you guys in the next video. Do all that YouTube stuff, the subscribe, the share, the like, tallywhack, the notification bell, tell your mother's cousin's brother twice removed that there's a dank ass channel out there. And I will see you stallions and stallionettes in the next video. Peace.